guys, it's Alara from Witchy Wibbly Weave. Um, this is going to be just me for this video because I'm trying to do an altar tour. I've actually never done this, so we're just going to kind of roll with it and see what happens. I tried doing this with um, setting the camera still and it just, I could not get it to show what I needed it to. So we're actually, we're going to move a little bit because I'm going to take you in close and kind of show you some of the different elements of my altar. So. I'm sorry if the camera shakes a lot. I'm going to try and keep it as still as I can um, while we're while we're doing this, but there is going to be some movement. So this is kind of just the overall view of my altar. This is my working space, not only for my witchy and metaphysical things, but also it is my craft. It's my crafting and creative space. So this is actually probably the tidiest it is ever going to be. And I actually did tidy away some of my creative stuff before I uh, started showing you guys this just because I I wanted to kind of set that aside for something later. Um, some of my creative things are a little bit more personal, so it's not really something that I am comfortable showing y'all at this point. And most of the things that are incredibly personal that I really don't want to share with anyone um, are not physical objects to see outside of my creative stuff. So this is actually a pretty good represent, uh, representation of what my actual altar looks like. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys this and kind of go in close and talk to you about some of these different elements of my altar is the fact that soon, as I've mentioned in some of my pre you know previous videos with Alex, uh, I'm going to be moving soon. And so this is the last video before I start breaking my altar down and it's not probably ever going to look like this again because I am moving back in with my mom here soon and um, you know I'm going to be going deep inside the broom closet and hopefully most of this stuff is not going to be as obvious and later down the line whenever I can get some free time um, just you know for it to be me and y'all um, once I move I'm hoping to do another video to show the big difference, what things look like, you know, when I go into the broom closet and see what different elements are there, what I've kind of done away with as being um, not necessarily essential and things like that. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll move in and I'll start talking about some of the different elements of what I do have set up here. So as you can see, I, I think by looking at this and y'all ex excuse the mess over there, that's that is the bookshelf, game shelf, slash uh, place for wayward things. So that's some of where my creativity stuff goes when it gets put away. So y'all just try, try to ignore that that's there. You see nothing. Um, but just looking at my altar, I think it's kind of easy to, to see that I'm kind of eclectic, but... I'm not sure where I want to start. Um, actually, you know what, guys? Why don't we start by lighting some incense? This is something that I do even when I'm not preparing to sit down on my altar because one, I love the smell of it, and two, I don't know. It just kind of helps get me into the mindset of when I do sit down. Um, come on, catch fire. Sometimes I have the hardest time getting these things, but normally whenever I light incense the way that I extinguish the flame for whatever reason is I, I clap and the sound percussion um, puts the flame out. A lot of what I do is um, it's either breath or sound related or it has a lot to do with writing. That's why you see here there's this giant stack of journals and books and things and over here there's also more journals and books. Um, but the overall thing that I kind of wanted to show you guys is the fact that for the most part, I, I view my altar, I try to have some balance in the way that I do things. It may not be perfectly balanced, but it really worked for me because this was the first full altar that I ever set up um, in any real way other than just, okay, I'm going to actually show you. Before I ever had this full setup, what I actually had was this little 
jewelry, um, this was a little jewelry box that I bought at Goodwill and I actually took it and I broke it apart and I repainted it. And this little jewelry box was the first, my first little shrine. It was super teeny tiny and it actually, I'm gonna move y'all, it actually sat right over here on my yarn cabinet. All that stuff on top wasn't there before. And my jewelry box sat on there. I'm gonna bring y'all back. And on the jewelry box, I had my bear totem. I also got that at Goodwill. When I got him, he was not um, painted. He was not colorful in any way. He was just that gray concrete plaster color. And I actually, I took him home and I painted him to try to give him some realism. Um, I don't know if I will talk to you guys about this in the future, but I probably will. But the bear is actually very important to me, not only as I consider him my own personal, I don't know if I would say totem or more of my guide. I see the bear as being very protective. Um, and oftentimes, some, uh, whenever I go into deep meditation, if I, if it's a meditation where I'm actively moving or going somewhere, um, oftentimes bear will show up for me. Or sometimes I will just be doing random things and I'll just get a very strong sense of bear is with me or bear is watching. And um, I actually find that rather interesting considering when I was a little kid, my first um, pet was a very sweet, good-natured um, snow, snow dog. He was a, a Samoyed and his name was Bear. And he was my, my biggest friend, confidant, he was my protector. He, he did not go anywhere without me and vice versa. And he is, he was very special to me. So I find it, it's almost like when I discovered that the actual animal bear was important to me and, and uh, you know, personal to me, it reminded me of him and it's almost kind of like I connect the two together because he had a similar energy to him as what I feel from bear spirit. So it's almost like he is always with me. So he's very, he's very, very personal to me in my practice. And for whatever reason, um, this was one of the first bracelets that I made myself. Um, I use a lot of crystals in my work. This one has sodalite, um, low light, moonstone, labradorite, and smoky quartz. And for whatever reason, it felt very, it, it felt very important for him to carry that bracelet. And so that became his, his, his uh, collar, his necklace, um, so to speak. So that's kind of always been with him since the day one that I brought, you know, the bear spirit home with me. But when we're gonna zoom back out a little bit. Whenever I first started my my altar here on the table, which this is actually in my living room, it's not the place that I would have chosen, but it's kind of the space that I had. I don't like it being so out in the open because it does feel very personal, but for the most part, um, even though I was living with a long-term partner, he rarely ever came out into the living room because he had his own little den. So, um, this really became my sanctuary and my working space. I do have some sliding doors behind us that lets in some light and there are people that walk their dogs out there sometimes so it, it can be a little uncomfortable but I mostly try and keep the blinds closed to try and keep this as, as personal and sacred as possible. So for the most part when I finally set up this big table and start it just kind of grew ever and ever outwards. More and more things got added as elements started creeping up into my practice. But what you see here, it mostly, when it first started off, I just had three candles. They were all white and they were in the same positions that I have now. I had one over here in the corner. I had one right in front of me and I had one over here. Three is very significant to me. I, this was all, before I really expanded on this altar, when it started out, I had not, the Morgan had not come into my life yet. So I didn't know why I was doing three 
of a lot of things, but it just felt right. And then kind of later on, I started, you know, the the symbol of three, six, and nine became very significant to me through her. And things just kind of started making more sense on some of the, the elements that I was doing, you know, subconsciously before. It was like little, little things were falling into place. But for whatever reason, it felt very important for me to have right over here this is all for Morgan this is all for my lady I'm gonna take you in closer and I'm gonna move the incense out of the way because I've already burned myself on it a few days ago which is a story that I'm not gonna tell y'all because it's a little <laughs> embarrassing um, because of how it happened and where it happened um, but anyway so all of this section over here is actually for my lady this is for Morgan this is her spot specifically to honor her I rarely ever move things out of this area because I consider them to be hers and not mine um, this is also where I lay my offerings and devotional items to her so one of the things that you'll notice try not to shake too much um, this is a a crystal grid I like doing a lot of crystal grids in my stuff um, and a lot of times I will create one and I will just leave it up and I will just periodically refresh it or cleanse it or, you know, re, um, not repurpose, but re-intention it as it needs to if I feel like it's getting stagnant. But this is something that I set up very, very intuitively when I first decided that I was going to work with the Morgan after she blazed into my life. Um, and... Some of these things I, in the crystal grid, I dedicated to her before I even realized that they, that other people considered them important or sacred to her. So I'm going to take him closer. This particular crystal grid, um, on the outside, these are phantom quartz. And then I also have garnet chips, black tourmaline, Apache tears, which is a clear clearer form of obsidian and then in the middle I have a smoky I not a smoky quartz a regular quartz generator um, and this was something that I, I specifically set up with the intention of kind of marking the space as hers it's almost like her seal of possession to generate her energy and let it be known that this is her space and not mine just kind of making it personal for her and right over here are some items that these were the first offerings I ever laid on my shrine or my altar um, this one is actually a hagstone it was the very first item I ever found after coming out to myself as a witch and it was the first everything that I found it and it turned out to be a hagstone that was right outside my front door the first item I ever laid on my altar and I was amazed because when I first picked it up I didn't see it but whenever I put it on my altar it was almost like it transformed in front of my eyes and I saw the head of a wolf howling to the moon and it floored me. It was like an electrical current going through my body when I set it on my altar and all of a sudden my eyes saw what it was. And <laughs> it was just a very unique experience for me and I would not change that experience for anything in the world. Um, the second thing that I ever laid on my altar is actually right here. It's this little cup of crow and I believe that those are mockingbird feathers. And on my first outing after the Morgan had spoken to me, well, she didn't say anything, but when she first reached out to me and she became very apparent of, girl, you're gonna listen, um, I went out for a walk with my dog, which at the time was very unusual for me to go out on walks. And I came across just handfuls and handfuls of these feathers. And it was almost like, I. I would try and walk past them and then I would stop and I would have to go back. So yeah, that's that. Um, the One of the first gifts that was ever given to me for her was by Alex. 
I had mentioned to her that the Morgan, I thought the Morgan was calling me and I had talked to her a little bit about my first instances of her um, showing up and what that was like and what it felt like and why I thought it was the Morgan. And this was one of the very first gifts that Alex gave to me after that. And it's a little, a little medallion that has her image on one side. And then it just has this very, you know, Celtic, emblem on the other but I set that up over here it just kind of came home and automatically went over to this section um, but yeah with my the Morgan side of my altar a lot of my experiences and a lot of when the Morgan talks to me it mostly seems to be through her aspect of babe the the battle crow um, she's also the crone like the washer at the ford and things like that and Actually, while I'm talking about that, I'm going to show you guys something, and you can tell me if I'm crazy or not. So, I told you that before the Morgan ever came into my life, I had found this jewelry box at Goodwill, and I had the strong urge to just take it home and paint it. And the when I was painting this jewelry box, for whatever reason, at that time, I decided that I was going to paint a mural on the side. Oh, excuse me, I'm pushing my chair out so I can stand up. But the mural that I decided to paint on one side is just this tree under a full moon by a rushing river. And then on the other side, I painted the tree under a, under a moon. I think it was, I, for whatever reason, my brain told me to paint the waning moon which at the time I didn't know anything about moon phases. But also, I, for whatever reason, I painted this figure kneeling at the water side. And going back, it scared me the fact that I essentially painted the washer at the board. Maybe not in her crone aspect, but she was there. Like she had always been there, like she was always supposed to be there. And it was just crazy to me. But I kind of wanted to show you guys that. And y'all you, can decide if I'm crazy or not. But to me, it seemed like before I even knew... I, I didn't know anything about the Morgan before she came into my life. I knew absolutely nothing. Which is interesting considering being a undergrad history major who... Um, I specialized, I focused on ancient civilization and I had always had a burning passion for mythology and folk tales. It's amazing that I never, I never knew of her, I had never learned of her before she popped into my life, you know, like a blazing forest fire. But I don't know, it's just one of those synchronicity things that it knocks my socks off when I stop and actually think about it. But I digress. Um, since Bave seems to be the most important aspect in my journey so far, and she is the aspect that has spoken to me the most, and she's the one who initially reached out to claim me, um, I once I finally got some colorful, some actual colored candles, I decided to put a red candle in the corner for Bave, specifically to her. Um, this crow totem, it called to me it was at power of the rainbow and it had to come home with me and that's just how it happened the little black cup that you see here is actually um it's like a little sake cup i got it from a shop called daiso it is it's like the japanese equivalent of a dollar store and they've been popping up um more and more in in this area of texas that i'm living and i absolutely love daiso i love it so much um but I, I just recently bought that for a new offering dish for the Morrigan. Um, previously, I'm going to move y'all to the right here. Previously, her, um, all of her drink offerings and such were in this cup. So before I took it off of her, her side of the altar, I asked her permission and stated that I, I wanted to give her a, a proper offering cup that I felt... Um, would please her more and I asked her permission to use that cup in, in other things and I cleansed both the cups you know after I got the okay and so now that that little chalice it um, it holds my seashells which 
I, I use seashells a lot in um, my grid work with other, with crystals. I don't know why, but I really have always been drawn to the ocean. I'm, I consider myself a water baby. Ow, stop. Sorry, there are people walking in that path behind my, my, uh, my sliding doors again. So yeah, I don't know why, but I've always been drawn to the ocean and I like to use seashells in a lot of things. And you can actually see that I have seashells and little glasses here and here. And for whatever reason, I use those as a representation of the masculine and feminine. Um, I, and it just kind of, it works for me for whatever reason. Al, stop it. Sorry. Um, here, I'm, excuse the, the quick movement, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce y'all to Al. Al! Excuse the mess on the floor. This is kind of his area, but that's Al. Say hi, Al. Okay, we're gonna come back. He's, he's very happy with the bone that I've given to him. He never goes anywhere without it. But, um, but like I said, over here, these, this is an incense that I bought specifically for my lady. I, I want to call, I want to say it's called, um, Dragon Magic. Here, I actually have the box up here. Let's see if I can, yeah, this is the one that I, I have bought specifically for her. Um, so whenever I wish to do a ritual specifically to her, I will light that as an offering. Um, also within the sake cup that I was telling y'all about before, is storm water. It's one of my favorite offerings to give her when I'm not giving her a particular alcohol, um, which I generally consider like um, Irish whiskey to be one of the main things that I offer her. But um, the sake glass right now has storm water, which I've collected from three different very powerful storms, one of which knocked over a tree right outside my door. Um, so I consider that to be very potent offering that I thought was very, um, in tune with, with her spirit, with her energy. And she, she really seemed to enjoy it. It was, it was evaporated out of the glass within a day or so. So I hope that that means that she enjoyed it. And I seem to have gotten a very pleasant feeling from placing that on there. So I, I do believe that she enjoyed it. Um, also... This is a, a candle specifically for her. It's my devotional candle whenever I wish to speak with her on a more deep level where I really want to sit down and communicate with her. And let's see if I can get it. It was one of those things where I was instantly drawn to the candle. I just thought it was really pretty. And the first thing I saw was the crow image. But then I don't know if whenever you can see it but whenever I did focus focus no no it's not gonna focus okay but um, the the fragrance is called nevermore but it is I'm gonna bring it close so I can read it it is reminiscent of candlelit study tattered leather books with crumbling pages scattered atop an old oak desk a warm cup of black tea and a smoking pipe packed with fine tobacco. So that, I don't know why, but I, I put the cork, you know, took the cork off of it and I took a sniff and I was like, whoa, this is her. This is what she, this is what she would smell like if I could smell her. So I bought it. It was a little bit pricier than what I could necessarily afford comfortably at the time, but I did it to as an offering for her hoping that she would enjoy it and as a way to connect the way that I'm I'm a very scent oriented person which is why I have so many incense different incense fragrances on my altar for use which actually I'll, I'll go ahead and take you over there and I'll show you some of them so this is the incense that we just lit uh, this one is um, this one is pagan mat or it's pagan magic. It's one of my favorites, and I actually just got this rather recently. But I've really enjoyed this one. But I also have um, this one is full moon lavender 
Um, I think this one is called Spiritual or Spirituality. I really enjoyed this green one here. Um, and then I've actually got this on a little turntable that I got at a, I want to say it was at a Ross. But this was really cheap. I want to say it was like 5 or $6. But it really worked out for what I needed it for. And then I have these two, which I really enjoy. One is Meditation. And then this one is Reiki. Both of these are really pleasant, and I really like to use them when I am trying to meditate at my altar. And then this one is uh, Nang Champa, which is a little bit headier than what I'm used to, but I really enjoyed it. Um, but almost every single time that I sit at my altar, I will light incense, um, which down here I also have some cone incense. This one is Divine Temple, I think. Um, so all of my incense, for whatever reason, I like to collect it to use to make, um, inks, paints, um, specifically intentioned or, you know, to add a little bit of magic and power to it for when I'm, um, drawing or writing. Um, I like to use that as an element if I'm writing an intention. And then in this little crystal bowl, this is the big bowl that I use to place my, my crystals in to cleanse them, which I do with a bigger quartz point and my selenite palm stone. This is my favorite way of cleansing at the moment. And then it's all here in my little mortar and pestle that I use for making some of my incense blends, which you can kind of see. I'm currently charging a pink self-love candle that I'm hoping to use in um, in September for I, I really enjoy Kellyanne Maddox's uh, self-love September and then right next to it not only has the incense in the in the candle that's charging but I also have the loose and cone incense that I've made along with a tiny 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 little container this is a uh, rose water I do really like rose water. Although I think I agree with some people that it needs a little extra um, something to help keep it in check, just to help balance out. Um, so the feeling of the rose doesn't um, become too shallow, I guess. But yeah, um, one of the things I mentioned in my, I wanna say it was our witching on the, on the cheap um, video is these are some of the birthday candles that I found and yes I do use them this is a, a brand new packet but this is my favorite one because it does come with the the silver the white and the black which are my my main colors that I like to use um, but yeah so that's that I try and keep that out of the way when I'm not using it um, I do have my little candle snuffer and this is the altar bell that I found at the antique mall that I was talking to you about. And I was really surprised when I found her because, let's see if I can grab her and bring her in a little close. It, it was very goddess to me. And so she came home with me. I got her for a very good price, I, would, I, I think, or I feel I did. And then uh, right here is where I have always had this on my on my altar when I whenever it became a working altar. I always use five tea lights, not only for physical light because I like to work in dark in a dark room or in dark spaces because I feel like it brings more of the moon in. Um, but it, I I don't I really like the the ambience of it all. But I also use this for um, kind of drawing myself into into the working by centering. This is one of the other ways that I use to incorporate the different elements within myself and bringing them to a whole to be within my practice. Um, and I do that with a with some with different incantations, which I'm not going to share with y'all at this point because it's still very personal. And then over here, I'm going to move this off to the side again so I don't burn myself because you know. Clumsy Alara. Um, this is the, the little dish that I was telling y'all about with the sand that I use for drawing sigils. Um, when it is not for drawing sigils, I also use it to safely keep, um, you know, to put my Palo Santo out, to put matches out, things like that. 
Um, but often I will clean it out and refill it for the purpose of, um, I will set an item in the center and then I will draw specific uh, sigils, words, things um, around it with the idea of putting the intention into it. So this is, this is one of the ones I'm really having to think more and more about on whether or not I'm going to be able to keep it when I downsize. But now that we've really talked about my lady's side, because she always comes first, now I think we can kind of move on to some of the other aspects, which looking back on it, this may be a little bit of a long video. I'm sorry if this runs a little long, but I hope that y'all enjoy it. So I have a bunch of different crystals here. Um, the big ones is the selenite wand that was gifted to me by Alex. I also have a lingam shiva, um, which I don't, I don't know. It's very, it's a very interesting energy and maybe we'll talk about that a little later in a future stone video. Um, this little chunk right here is actually a citrine point that was gifted to me by the owner of Power of the Rainbow. Um, then here is a pink opal and this is a cat's eye. And then I want to say that is a blue appetite and two amazonite tumbled stones. And those all have kind of, um, I don't know if I mentioned that this is also rose quartz, but those all have very um, specific things that are happening. I also have a buckeye, which is um, very important to me from my childhood and from a nostalgia point from where I grew up in, in Arkansas. Um, it was considered by my family to be very good luck for everyone to always have a buckeye. My mother still keeps one in her purse it's for, um, we use it for almost like a good luck charm or a protection charm. And it's one of the few things that is very evident when looking at my family, even though they're very conservative Christian. Um, it just makes me smile because I just want to tell them, you know, that's magic, right? <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's still very important to me now as I'm realizing my own practice. So it has its own special place on my altar. And then whenever I do go on long trips, I do take it with me. I also have a um, this was given to me when I was very young I want to say I was 10 or 11 years old or maybe even younger but it was gifted to me by my very best friend from childhood and uh, at the time I think she told me it was topaz but she knew ever since I was young I have had an affinity for wolves a very deep love of wolves so she gifted that to me and is one of the very few things that I still have from her. And this is the same friend that would sneak me pages from her mother's Book of Shadows um, on just general things, not anything, you know, super, super duper personal. But I don't know. It's just a very, um, very sentimental item for me. And it belonged here. And this whole side is generally kind of devoted to um, things that are specifically important to me from either for personal reasons, for childhood, nostalgia. Um, I also consider it to be the side where um, will be the majority of, it would have been the majority of my ancestor, um, my ancestor things. Like in the back here, you'll see this is a jar of cedar shavings from my grandfather's um, workshop. It's very sentimental to me and cedar has always been very important to me personally. Just it has a very strong um, center in my life from my past and my, and my present and hopefully into my future. And then also um, right on top of it is a collar from m my baby, my, my cat that passed away a few years ago now. But she, she was... Very, very, very important to me, and I still miss her every day. Um, so she belonged here with me on my altar. So she she will always have a place no matter where I go or wherever I move. So yeah, you will you will see her again. Um, and that was that she's her name was Naomi. Um, so yeah, now um, so this side is more I want to say more nature, nostalgia, ancestor you know, past, uh, you know, the past side of my, to honor where I've been. And then the other side is the Morgan kind of honoring where I'm going and where I'm at now. 
And for me, that just made a lot of sense in the balance of it all and the way that my brain operates. Um, and then, you know, floating back a little bit here, um, I still keep the three candles like I had before, but now it's red, black, and white, the significant colors of the Morgan. Um, in, you know, her, in her bathe aspect, which I work with mainly, and then, of course, her, um, for whatever reason, I know that everyone always associates red with, with maca, um, and I do too, but for whatever reason, I also very, very, very strongly associate red with Bave. And some of that is just the energy that I see f when I look at her and when I imagine her, um, and when I've meditated with her. So, yes, red can be representative of Maka, but I also strongly consider it um, in relation to Bave. And this is the, I don't know if this is considered an odd thing with, with every, you know, with other people, but this is just the way that I am. And I've said before that I really don't conform to normal structures of doing things in a lot of aspects. But the way that I look at the red, black, and white candles, I don't really look at them in the aspect of each candle is a different color relate, you know, related to a singular aspect of the Morgan. I almost see it as it is all of them all at once, like very much in the way that I see her. She is not just three different aspects. She's every single one of them individually, but all at the same time, together, connected. And I don't know, it's, I don't know how to really explain it other than it, it makes sense in the vortex of fluxiness that my spirituality works. So all three candles are not representative of three different particular aspects of her, but are representative of all of them, all at the same time, and the idea that they are all separate, but at the same time, they are all one. And hopefully that makes sense to everybody and I've explained it well. Because sometimes it is difficult to explain the things that go on in my brain. So yeah, that's that's most of that. Um, in most of my altars, I'm probably always going to have... Um, I'm probably always going to keep the storm, the storm water as, you know, as I've mentioned for the Morgan. But I also almost always have had a bottle of moon water. Um, which has actually got a, a piece of quartz at the bottom charging. Um, but I'll probably keep those whenever I move. The, it just, the bottling may have to get more, more subtle. Um, this is actually a old perfume bottle from my childhood that I've reclaimed and cleaned out. And um, I have cleansed it. And I'm actually hoping in the future to make a either an anointing oil or a perfume specifically for my lady um, as something that I can wear when I sit in in meditation in commune with her. So when I, when I go to commune with her, I would like to have that. So this is something that I'm setting aside for a future project. And then almost always in the future I'm probably going to keep my journals. I I have so many different journals for so many different things. Um, this one particularly is for me to, I've used it for writing down my path work and astral travel stuff. I've used it for when I am coming up with recipes for different incenses, um, when I was learning and interpreting the different meanings of my shells. I all Sorry about that. I was running out of memory, so I had to, I had to stop and, and clear things out. So I'm sorry, but yeah, this is pretty much my my junk grimoire where all of that stuff um, goes, and it it pretty much stays with uh, with me. It doesn't stay stationary. But this this one right here that's underneath it is actually my tarot journal. Um, I've had it ever since I actually started my tarot journey, and just about all of my my readings for myself and any time of um, when I was first learning the tarot um, and whenever I path work cards it kind of goes in here and it, this actually stays put it doesn't really move all that much I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back okay we're gonna go over to the right so we're gonna move okay 
So this, on this side here, um, this book is also one that is, it does not stay stationary. It actually kind of goes with me where, wherever I go. Um, normally I'll put it in my bag or in my purse. And this one, I'm actually not going to open up and show you guys. And I hope you will understand that because this one is, is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly personal to me. This is, um, this is my book where I write all of my, my poems and my writings. Um, it started out as my book for, um, for me to work through and it deals with my struggles with mental illness. And I actually got this particular journal. I've had one of these since I was a teenager, but you know, once I fill them up, I move on and I, I keep, you know, I always keep one active for writing. But this, this particular book has been with me since um, I got it right after I got out of the hospital a few years ago. And it's kind of stayed with me other, ever since. And it, but it started out as, um, as just a place for me to, to write about the things that I was dealing with. And then it kind of took on its, it took on a life of its own as I started my witchy path. And it became, especially when I started working with the Morgan and specifically Babe, because it became my way of alchemizing my past traumas, my mental health, my, my painful experiences in the past. And kind of working through them into something much more much more powerful and it actually started to not only become what it was before but it became my place to write um, anything that came to me poetry wise when I was working with Babe specifically because for whatever reason anytime I work with her I always experience this thing where you know I'll have a poem or words just like just come into my mind so strongly that it demands to to be written or to flow out of me in some way um and that just seems to be a a, a common experience that I have with her so yeah this this is this is incredibly personal to me and honestly I think I've only let two people in my entire life actually read one of my journals and that will probably be, those will probably be the only people that I will ever let read. So yeah, so like I said, this I'm just, I'm not going to open for those particular reasons, but it goes with me um, whenever I need it. And actually, it's really interesting, I never thought I would do this in a million years, but um, here recently, I have not only just been writing these down, but I have been audio recording myself, not, not not speaking them or reading them out loud, but, but singing them out loud, singing them into existence. And I've been doing it for some of my poems, um, or I've been doing it spontaneously ad-libbing um, as a form of an offering to my lady to not only, you know, not only give the normal physical things as a, as a gift, but to give something very much more, more personal and meaningful of myself because singing has always been um, very a very special part of my life I've I've always I'm not gonna say I'm a wonderful singer but I'm, I'm okay and it's something that I have always taken a lot of pleasure in and it's always something that is singing has always meant a lot to me so it means a lot for me to not only sing some of my words to her that I've written but to also just spontaneously um, give her praise and worship through through songs to her for her so yeah um, I'm gonna take you back over and then this is actually this is actually a library book it really needs to go back to the library very soon um, but it has been on my altar here recently because um, this for, for any of you that do not know this book it is The Universe in Your Hand by Christoph Gulford. Um, he is actually the protege of, of Stephen Hawking. And this was his book as a way to explain the universe in terms that a grade schooler could understand and experience without, without math equations, without 
long terms that completely go over your head. This entire book has was written so that anyone could understand the universe that wanted to. And it, it was such a, it was such, it was such a special book when I, when I read it and it immediately became something that I want to, to have and to keep and be part of my personal collection. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm probably going to buy this for my own personal collection as soon as I'm able to. Um, but I think that's pretty much everything. I know that this video kind of went a little long, um, but I hope that y'all enjoyed and, um, I think it'll be interesting whenever I do my next altar video about, you know, when I'm staying in my new place and things have gone much more, more subtly. So hopefully y'all have enjoyed this and hopefully um, I will see you again soon for my next altar video. But this has been Alara from the Witchy Web Weave and I hope you have a good day.